you know, he's never ever fought an animal like me, you know, who's, who, you know, so determined to, you know, be, become great and, and wipe out the division. You know, after I've, after I've beat Spence, I want, I want the, the Thurman of the world and, and unify all this division, that's what I want to do, Ed. Of course, when we had the conversations, there was talk of moving up to 154 pounds. But a lot of people just presumed you'd vacate. People goaded you that you just automatically vacate, and, and that almost pushed you even more to say, "Absolutely not! This is the fight I want." Absolutely. When people were telling me that, we made me stick my heels in more, and you know, it's, I need, I need to. It took me too long just to, to give this title away. You know, it's going to be tough, you know, to make well to weight, but you know, I've got a great, you know, a great nutritionist in Greg Marriott who's going to take me down to the weight slowly. You know, I've already, I'm already passing my targets out in, in training, so I'm looking forward, you know, to, to getting in there and, and giving the fans a, you know, magnificent fight because if if if, if this if this, this guy, you know, uh, meant to be the, you know, the next big thing, then all I can say is the fans are in for a treat because you know that I'm gonna bring the heat, you know, on the 27th of May. Obviously, you, you lost your last fight, which was hard to take. A great fight against the middleweight unified world champion. How much do you take from that fight, the fact that you went in there, mixed it with him, stood up to his power as well, and now you're moving down to fight effectively a smaller man? I took a lot from that, you know, from the, from the Glovkin fight. Everybody ripped me off. I went in there, I showed what balls I had to get in there and, and put it on him, you know. You know, it bust me out in the second round, but I still stood there and I stood in the middle of the ring and, you know, I, I had it out with him. You know, I learned a lot from that because he's a huge puncher and I believe me making welterweight, I'm, I'm the biggest welterweight out there. So I, I believe that I'll be bullying these guys. I believe that I'm going to be so strong, fast, fit, you know, because when I, when I do I have to really grill myself to make that welterweight weight and, and, and put the weight back on hell for that, I'm, I'm like a beast in that ring the, the day after. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to chucking some chocolate brownies at, at Spence. I'm looking forward to it, you know. And the only one truth in this fight is Errol's going to get beat. Adam, I know you're uh, sure you've got some questions for the gentleman at the table. Yeah, Errol, uh, obviously you've had a, a really sweet rise up to this point. What, what makes you believe that you can, obviously, the Golovkin fight apart, really become the first man to beat Kelbrook? What is it in your arsenal that makes you different to everyone else he's fought? I believe in my skills. Um, you know, I've been in there and I sparred with a lot of great fighters, Floyd, Lamar Pierce, and Sean Porter. And I went toe to toe and tick for tack with the best of them. I believe in my skills, I believe in my ability, I believe in my coach having a great game plan and coming in to win. What did the, uh, the great Floyd Mayweather say when you worked together? Um, he said I was a great fighter. He just said I needed to work on a little bit of patience and, um, you know, that comes with, with fighting. And then I was three, I was four and no at that time. And what do you feel about what Kel was saying about the, the strength that he has at welterweight, that he's the most powerful welterweight in the world, that he's bigger and stronger than everybody else? And do, do you worry about that? I'm not worried about that at all. I mean, I'm not a guy that walks around at 160, 165. I get up to, to 170 and a high 170s too. So I'm a strong, I'm a fast, I'm a, I hit hard too at welterweight too, so I'm a big welterweight too. And tell us, obviously, you've been over here before to, to the Olympics, so you, you don't mind the travelling. You're obviously going to come in in front of 25, 30,000 Brits. That doesn't phase you in any way, or does that spur you on more? Don't phase me. No, it's all motivation. You know, I've been over here three times as an amateur, but it's going to be totally different as a pro. 30,000 plus fans are rooting for Kell Brook, and I'm excited to upset them. What are you going to do differently in the fight to anyone that's faced Kell Brook before? Um, you know, it's a game plan that, you know, we're not going to discuss right now. Uh, you know, my coach got it, and we're going to discuss it during training camp. But you believe that you've got the slick southpaw skills and the power to be able to take this title home? Definitely. Cal, let's bring you in. Um, first of all, what, 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 after the Golovkin fight, you obviously came to terms with losing for, for the first time, but were you proud of yourself about the way you went about the rounds of action, because from, from our point of view, um, it was a hell of a fight. You know, I was I excited during the fight. You know, I was just, I was gutted because the, the, the fight got stopped, basically. And, you know, I was just gutted just to, to see how I would have gone, you know, if I would have been able to see. I believe that, you know, I'd, I'd give it, I'd give, you know, gave it Golovkin and I believe that he were, I could tell at the end of the round and during the fight that he was slowing down and I think I was going to take over. 
you think you would have beaten him if the Iron Man? I believe so. Up? You know, I've, I've, you know, till that stage, I'd never, never dreamt of losing. You know, so I'm a champion. I go in there every single fight to to win. I'm determined to win. Uh, and the weeks after was obviously losing your unbeaten record, which was was intact and, and so impressive for so long. Were there moments that you thought, you know, what next? Was there, you know, a, a depressive period? Yeah, of course. Nobody likes no. Nobody likes to lose, and um, you, I had the longest reigning, you know, unbeaten record in Britain, and I and I wanted to keep hold of it. You know, absolutely good. You know that I, that I'd lost in, in in such a big fight, but like I said, I've learned a lot from that fight. And uh, I want, I want, I want blood. I want, I want, I want the truth, blood. I know you've only seen snatches of the fight with Danny Jacobs at, at, at the weekend. But do you believe maybe that Gennady Golovkin won't, won't quite be the same again since you've shared a ring together? You know, nobody's been going the distance with him. You know, so I, I believe that I did not the stuffing out of him in that fight. You know, I think I put the blueprint out there. You know, and uh, I remember watching bits of footage, and even Jacobs mentioned that. He, that his friend were on the phone to him saying, Kel Brooks upsetting Golovkin and you know everything else. So I believe that they, they went in there knowing that he's you know he's he's not invincible, which you know were a close fight and they went the distance. A great deal's been made about your weight. Obviously you, you you're saying that you are the biggest, strongest welterweight in, in the world, but there were people that thought you should maybe go back at, at like middle because of obviously fighting at, at middleweight. How happy are you with with getting down to ten stone seven and being you know, strong when you do it. I'm definitely not happy about it. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm an experienced, I'm an experienced fighter. You know, I know what I know what I need to do. You know, I've done it before. I'll do it again. You know, I'm, I'm so determined to come in, leave leave no stone unturned. Follow follow the diet to a T. You know, don't don't be sneaking sneaking down downstairs in the kitchen and, and going in the fridge. No, no, that's happening in, in in this fight. You know, I've got to be meticulous. I've got to make sure I do everything. You know, on you know because I'm coming, I'm coming here. You know, for for mine and my uncle's dream to be here at, at Bramall Lane, and I've got I'm gonna bring so much energy from from the, from my fans. And, you know, I'm, it's gonna be a fantastic night for for everyone in Yorkshire. Is that as much a motivation for you that it's here at Bramall Lane, outside in front of your people, that it's you know, against Errol Spence, this this brilliant American? It's brilliant American, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna see how brilliant he is. But if he's brilliant as he, as he says he is, he's gonna he's gonna bring out the best in me. I'm gonna draw so much energy from from all the all the fans here. It's gonna be a fantastic, spectacular night. So. The fans are in a fantastic, going to get a fantastic treat on the 27th of May. You've always liked being up against it, you know, the underdog with Sean Porter out in the States. I think Eddie was saying that the bookies are making Errol Spence favourite here. Does that spur you on? Do you do you relish those opportunities? Of course I do. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. You know, nobody, nobody, nobody's really seen the real, real Cal Brook. And I, I believe we're going to get it the 27th of May. You know, I, I think. This, this is my time. This is this is this is for me to go out there and show exactly what I've got. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need everything in this fight, I believe. You know, and uh, I'm gonna go out there and do it. You say you you need everything. Is that because of the dangers that he brings, the southpaw speed and skills? Just some Errol Spence up as a fighter. You know, the, I've not really seen all this. I've seen little little bits of uh, him, but you know, um, he, he's looking he's looking the part. But like I said, he's never fought anything. 